Welcome to this talk. Before I begin, I'm not claiming to have any answers or to own anything to give to you. I'm only offering tools to help one realize what I think needs to be realized from time to time. I'm also not trying to prove anything in particular. I only want to point things out about common perceptions and notions of who we are and attempt to question these notions. This is also not a philosophical exercise, rather a pure shift in perceptions and consciousness. The ego is fundamental to the existence in modern life. As we grow up, we calibrate our actions in retrospect to how others see us, and to do that, we create a model of ourselves in our head. As we control the model, the model controls us, and we come to maintain and correct our behavior based on how we think other people ought to see us. As part of this insecurity of who we are, and as a result of our social conditioning, there comes both a division of ourselves from the rest of the world, and this creates alienation. Who am I? I also want to point out how problematic words are in attempting to describe this, if it isn't impossible. You are a person, you are here, you are alive, but you are not an ego. But if you are not an ego, what does it feel like to be a person? The separation of who we are into our ego masks the reality of what we could call personhood if the word personhood did not have such egoic sensibilities. One could also call it humanity. Nevertheless, the egoic sense of self, that is, the idea that you are separate from the world, negates all form or substance of who or what you actually are almost as if you were an infinitesimal white dot in your brain which everything else hangs from. It also negates the world, which then is perceived as an infinite black space in which everything is lifeless and dead and empty and cold and hard and stupid and devoid of meaning perhaps, though meaning too has wrong connotations in the wrong context. This description of the self and the world should alone bring about an experience that is both not pleasant, but something you are used to in everyday life, something you have to endure. The opposite experience is actually far more liberating, and as some of you have come to see it, as true. I describe it as the world within experience, but I may not stick to that term as my experiences change. Eckhart Tolle refers to it as presence. Krishnamurti refers to it as stillness, and in the right context, essence. But these terms are still too narrow, and the experience itself is not these terms. Let's slow things down, then, and oppose the definition now. See what you really are without thinking about it too much. Your body, your hands, and your legs. Your hands holding things, and your legs either touching the floor or cross-legged, whether you're outside or inside. The things that you see, your eyes as things that see as well. Uh, your ears, and correspondingly, the things that you hear. The things that you feel, and the skin in which you are feeling with it. That's all you. But notice I haven't made a distinction between what you used to see and what you do see, being you. That's because there is no distinction. More cognitively, your actions and influence on the people and things in the world around you are all also part of the same thing. That's also you, but again, there's no distinction between the you that's doing the influencing and the world that's being influenced. It's all the same thing. Now, if you know what I'm talking about, Notice how different the experience is to the one you had before. Now you're validated. It's as if you just remembered you really do exist, flesh and blood, and you had forgotten about it until now. It also validates the world, which may have until this description of yourself almost felt like it didn't actually exist at all. Almost as if it was part of an illusion that was just for you, and not concrete, not real, not tangible, and now it finally is again. Really pay attention and be still. Furthermore, you may remember how beautiful it can be, and you may also get the feeling of both a familiarity of all the times you've experienced this sense of self before, as if a timeline is spread out with all these moments in your past and even future being validated. 
You may even get a similar experience to one you get when music is being played, if I've done this right. But if you're just listening to this, then there is no music. But the reason you get this experience is because not only that music is great at nullifying opposites such as chaos and order, sound and silence, which are subjects for another talk, but they also nullify the opposites between the self listening to music and the music being played, at which an experience like this, if it's done well, does the same thing. But you can't describe it, so don't try to, just enjoy it. Keep doing this exercise for a few seconds of looking around, whether you're outside or inside, though outside is better for this, and imagine the world behind you as the whole world surrounds you. And to continue this different sense of self in comparison to one you may be used to in modern life, you see, if you still know what I'm talking about, and it hasn't been lost into words, that it's not this scary, homogenous experience that you might be afraid of it being, but rather a validating and whole experience. It doesn't seem to annihilate your place in the world as part of a dependent collective. It's just this. There are trees, birds, houses, clouds, stars, and that's it. It's so simple. Simple has a bad connotation to it, as if to mean basic or unfinished, but that's not what it means in this context. Everything is simple, while at the same time being so beautifully intricate and complicated. Then that's how it's meant to be. It's also, if you saw what I did there, a negation of opposites, simple and complicated in the English language, when really, in reality, as reality is undefinable, the same thing. But let's go back to your senses and remember what you're seeing and what is seeing having no distinction and what you're hearing and what is hearing having no distinction either. There being the whole infinite and non-separate world which is undefinable but also you. If you're still with me and start to recall this with this heightened sense of self, you may pick up on memories of this being a more prominent experience in your past, especially your childhood. You may get the thought now that with adulthood must come accompanied with it a loss of this world within experience you may be experiencing right now. But while it may be harder, as you have been conditioned as time has passed and you've grown up and gotten older and gotten used to the everyday motions of life, such an unfortunate sacrifice isn't necessary, I assure you. You can still do everything an adult needs to do. In fact, it may even be easier. And that's because you haven't even realized how much you've let go what you've let go of the stagnation and stress and anxiety which comes with modern life. In fact, you haven't even identified it as letting go. There was nothing to hold on to in the first place. If you were to think about letting go and what you've let go of, you may start to feel anxious and uh, frustrated and uh, disparaged. But that's because letting go has a bad connotation to it too. As, you, as if you had something important or valuable to let go of. But you realize, in this state, that there was nothing to let go of at all. In fact, it feels like you got something back. And as you examine this heightened sense of self, in comparison to the boxed in, opposed and alienated sense of self that stands against the world as opposed to with it, you'll see that the non-egoic sense of self-experience is not an alien experience either, something common, familiar, homely. If others listening are starting to get a heightened experience, though it should not be defined in such a term either and every moment, that's also fine. People have these experiences all the time, but they are too inexplicable most of the time for them to be described, and so they move on and maybe forget the experience. But the experiences themselves cannot be described, at least properly, and it certainly cannot be described in our culture's language. But even then, language is inherently separatist. It seeks out to divide and flesh out something as separate, and even if that separate thing that removes the experience of wholeness cannot be named, it can be felt, and one feels that separation in a comparably gloomy way. But let's return to realizing the flesh and blood of your own experience is inherently you, not the thought of yourself. You are here. You are here and in the world, and that's all there is to it. And you'll notice, if you're still with me, how unfitting the term you really is. 
it's too direct, too particular. When examining yourself in terms of your exclusive head and body, it might be preferable to point to yourself as if to say, this exists. But that word objectifies you. You'll see the problem with language then, in terms of describing an experience such as this, but if you have touched upon your own personal experience, the one I've been trying to give you, or at least point to, you'll see how unnecessary language is to begin with. You'll find the rest of your life is just beginning. It's new again. And you'll also find that you don't need to confuse yourself with your egoic conceptions to behave in a desirable way. It happens automatically. If you're still with me on simply observing the world, not trying to impose your will on it, to change things, realizing everything is fine as it is, because it's all you, which we've learned isn't even a concept you need to think about, you might find this motivation within you. But you may not be aware of what this motivation to be should be directed towards. But that's because this feeling of motivation doesn't need to be directed towards anything particular at all, just existence itself. I hope this talk has got you to both question some conceptions of yourself you initially had, as well as heightened your consciousness to a state of familiar familiarity, but also past repression with something you have lost with time and drudgery. For those in a particular state of alienation, perhaps this exercise has gotten you to remember something, something that cannot be explained in words, but something much more real than any thought you could conceive. Thank you.